Hi, this is my review of Imperial Bayonets, 1870, Sedan, We Were Not Cowards, published by CSL. So let's have a look at the rule book first. Um, this is the, the the rules for the series rules. There's also a um, game specific rule book, which I will have a look in a second. Um, one of the interesting things in the introduction, for example, is the, uh, the author calls out that the game is... Um, uses a lot of the mechanics um, from the operational studies group Napoleonics games designed by Kevin Zucker um, who was a mentor to this designer of this game. Now I haven't played one of Kevin Zucker's um, Napoleonic games for quite a while. Um, I don't think you need to have played um, those games to be familiar to or to familiarize yourself with this game but I think if you have you'll probably find a lot of the mechanics uh, very familiar. Certainly I found reading through the rule book, there were certain things I was like, oh yeah, I'm familiar with that. So it could have been that um, that was from those games. Um, the game, uh, the, the rule manual itself, as you can see, is nice big font. It's very nicely, cleanly laid out. Um, talks a lot about command, and command is, a, is one of the key mechanics I would describe um, from the game. And you have a sort of, um, you know, commanders in charge of the, your forces. Um, they can, they have, there's other commanders as well that they can activate and so forth. And you end up with units that are in command. And you have, end up with units that are out of command. And the in command ones, if we can see here on the player turn, which is nicely laid out. Um, you use, I use this quite a lot, learning the game system. In command um, units move first. And then out of command units can activate. You just have to roll um, to see based on their initiative. Um, and it's the officers that you're, you're using. So it's quite an interesting mechanics. I've seen similar mechanics to this in other Napoleonic games. Now I come to think of it. So it's a, it's a concept that's quite familiar. Um, obviously this is not a Napoleonic game. It's set in 1870. But you can see the sort of a bit of that um, same sort of thinking. To, to this to the approach to this game um, yeah overall I would say I read I read through the rule book put some counters out went through movement went through how the command system works went through combat um, and I found it pretty straightforward I'll be honest with you no um, yeah I thought it was a, it, it did a good job of explaining the core set of mechanics not a huge number of pages about yeah 20 pages in total so yeah very nicely done. The only thing I would call out, if I have to pick on something, um, there are no examples of play. And I think that would uh, help you concrete your understanding of the mechanics. Um, now, whether the examples of play should go in here or they should go in the series rule book, it's up for the designer to decide that. But I would have probably said, that would have helped my understanding at a reading level. Once I got the counters out in front of me, no problem at all. But reading through the rule book, that probably would have helped that. So this is the um, rule book specifically to this game system. So you're going to use the core rules or the series rules. And then these sit on, on top, I guess you could say. Um, you get a very nice introduction. Um, and then you get into the specific exclusive rules. Now a lot of these are very, very much based on the history of the event. So there's a lot of additional rules, chrome rules, you could say, that I um, really enjoyed. I always like that um, there's a sweet spot for me um, where there's a good element of chrome, um, historical um, setting rules, you know, that are unique to the period that I much I very much enjoyed. And there are there are some specifically um, around some of the artillery, I would say. Um, Again, stacking limits, not a, it's not a mega stacking game by any stretch of the imagination. Um, the death ride charges, I really enjoyed that um, that rule. And then you're into the scenarios. Now there is a sort of introductory scenario, which I used to learn the game. And then there's the main course, I would say, which for me is the historical mm -hmm. battle. I'll always start with the... I'll probably start, always start with the introductory scenarios for sure, but it's really the historical battle that I'm looking forward to playing. And that's the battle I've played the most. Then I also, um, they do a sort of a, um, a, a, a what if type uh, game uh, scenario that I enjoyed as well. And uh, they don't take a huge amount of time. 
Um, and some of those scenarios have their own specific rules. Again, nicely laid out. Um, the English is, is, is well written, it's well edit, edit, edited, that's the word. Um, and on the back you get a good example of the infographic for the counters that you're going to be using. Counters are very clear, very straightforward, I'll be honest. The one thing I would say with the, um, again, uh, I think where this rule book would benefit is from examples of play, especially on some of those Chrome rules. Um, that would really benefit, again, just to help cement your understanding at the reading phase. And the other element I would say is the first rule book, this one, would refer to, if you want to, uh, there, there would be specific rules for specific areas that would be detailed in here. And in one or two instances, I found them difficult to find in, in this rule book. There was one or two rules specifically around supply that I really struggled to find. I actually pinged the author and uh, very kindly sort of explained to me how the rules worked, which was great. Um, and then I reread through this and went, oh, yeah, OK, OK, I see that they're probably worded in this way on this particular scenario. I missed that. Um, so I think you have to be prepared to spend a little bit of time just to completely cement your understanding of the mechanics and the setting. Um, you're probably going to need to go through through both rule books multiple times, I will be honest with you. It's not a problem for me. Um, one of the, you know, I've played war games um, for a long time now, so I'm used to having to sometimes sort of delve a bit deeper and figure things out. And that was probably definitely the case, just in a few examples um, with this game. But the answers are there, you just have to find them. But um, they're not they're not extensively long rule books, so, so no problem at all. So here I've got the game laid out on the table. Um, it's a paper map. I think the map is absolutely gorgeous. I love the it's quite a um, quite a functional uh, graphic design, but really nicely done. Looks great, um, and the contents of the hexes are very clear. There's not a huge number of uh, hex types in terms of the terrain. Looks great on the table. I've got this under plexi, um, so there's a little bit of flair on the on the uh, table here, and then I've got the game set up um, as if we were about to start the historical scenario. I've not set it up in the optimal way, I would say, for either side, but I've set it up so that it looks nice, <laughs> for want of a better expression, for the table, and it'll help me sort of talk about some of the mechanics as well. Um, but yeah, it looks great. Um, everything from a visual point of view look, looks look, is, 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 is very nicely done, I would say. Uh, we're just going to zoom in on the counters and let's have a look at some of the counters. So in this example, some of the counters, um, the counters don't have a huge amount of information on them. They um, sort of combat values and movement values and initiative. Got a, a sort of a, a leader character here. Um, the one thing I would say, and they're, it's, they're very nicely done. The graphic layout is really clear. They are that sort of um, chunky MDF style um, printing that I, that I like. I'm using tweezers and all these, my sort of war games, this sort of um, counter density. And this is not a huge counter game by any stretch of the imagination. Um, the only thing I would say on the counters um, is that you take um, losses by flipping the counter over and the graphic style on both sides is identical. It's just the, the, the numerics have changed. So potentially you have to be very attentive, especially on setup, that you place out your counters with the right side up. Um, and I think maybe the game would have benefit from a little bit of a different graphic design style on the counter on the reverse side when it's taken a loss so it's clearer to players. But you know, um, no problem. You just gotta be attentive on the setup. Make sure you set the right counters up, um, with the right side up. A lot of the counters don't have a, um, any information on the back, they're just a, you know, what I would call a one step counter. But those that do, just be attentive to that. You also get these very handy player aids for helping set up, and um, the counters can be broken down into, into smaller uh, units effectively, um, smaller size counters. And um, what I would say is these I downloaded from their website, um, Azirata and you will need to do that. The actual um, 
player raids that the game comes with for, in terms of setup are incorrect. I'm not sure if both are incorrect, but certainly the Prussian one is. So you'll need to download the Prussian one, print it out like I have done here, and then it's fine, no problem at all, but you will need to do that. Um, and again, it, it's, it's very clear, once you've done that, it's very clear um, which um, court the, uh, all the counters belong to, and then you can place them on the map, and that's, that's very straightforward as well. So no problem, you'll just need to download the right files so you've got the correct files for, for the setup. So in terms of mechanics, the actual game is pretty straightforward um, and you've got this quite interesting uh, historical setup really. You know, you've got the French um, here in Sudan and um, the surrounding areas and you've got the Prussians. I actually, I've just realised I've forgotten to put some more Prussians on the board. Oh well, um, give the French a chance for a change. Um, you've got the Prussians sort of surrounding them and bringing more on into the battle. Um, Movement, very straightforward. Each counter has a movement rate. You're spending the movement cost for the movement points for the hex, very straightforward. Um, there's some interesting rules about crossing over uh, rivers, um, which is quite good. Uh, combat, again, very straightforward. It's a, a combat results, as you'd expect. So you're comparing the both combat values and working out the odds, and then you've got a combat results table. The table often will result in the um, more than likely the defender being pushed back if I'm being honest even at a one-to-one -one ratio um, the def that's often the case not always not always of course um, you, you it's a d6 game actually the actual turn plays through pretty straightforward um, there is a significant amount of um, there's a lot of Chrome rules that are in that um, rule book specific to this to this sort of historical game. You'll need to account for those. So you, I made some notes and I kept those to hand as I was learning the game and playing through the game. Cavalry charges, um, again, very straightforward. Um, you're using um, bombardment for the artillery. These are probably all mechanics. If you've played Kevin Zucker's games, these are probably mechanics that you're completely familiar with. Um, but actually, I wouldn't say the game's too complex. Uh, I didn't find it too complex. I find it's a, not a good balance between mechanics that are quite straightforward with a nice layer of chrome on top. Um, and as you can see, it's not a huge... Uh, the stats aren't massive. The, the number of counters isn't massive. Um, it's definitely a scenario uh, that you can play comfortably in an evening. The one thing I would say, there were times... You get a player's aid that I've got here with all your different tables on it. There were times where I stopped using it for the combat reference. And I think it's because the um, there's a combat result that you can get in bombardment that is the same as the result in combat, but the actual meaning is different between bombardment and combat, as I recall. So I, I actually just went back to the rule book and just used the rule book for that. Um, and uh, but broadly speaking, the, the players aid does a good job. And I, I found the same, yeah, it was. Um, it's all coming back to me now. I, I stopped using the combat reference, so it's just basically you roll on your combat result table, it tells you what you get depending on the odds. So let's say, let's pick a nice counter here. I've got a seven, um, say compared to a three, I'm rolling um, two to one in favor of the attacker, I'm rolling two to one on my combat result table. What I would do then is, depending on the result, I would actually check the rule book rather than using the, comp the reference table. I think there was a couple of cases where I wasn't clear on the reference table. I went back to the rule book and went, oh, okay, that's how it works. So I used that instead. But, but in essence, that's how combat works. It's very, very straightforward. Um, but there's more to it than that because you have artillery, you have cavalry. Cavalry can issue charges and there's those extra chrome rules for charges and for artillery. So it's a good... It's a good combination of historical mechanics that are on top of a system that's actually quite straightforward. And I could probably teach someone that system um, literally in you know, 10 or 15 minutes, no problem at all. But this extra, extra uh, chrome detail that really layers on top of it. Um, I'll let, I'm not going to explain every single mechanic in the game. I'm not the best at doing that. Um, the one thing I would say is that you quickly work out the 
whilst the mechanics are straightforward and the historical mechanics are that extra layer, using them to the best of the of your ability for the opposing side is quite something else. That's all I'm going to say. But I definitely um, I played it solitaire uh, the first couple of games and working things out, trying some different tactics, using artillery in different manners. Um, and uh, yeah, found that that was quite an engaging thing. There are some rules about having to attack when you attack, having to attack uh, all the counters in your in your zone of control, um, which is quite interesting. And there's some there's some there's some different things like that that adds a unique element to the combat. I would say, but mostly around the, the historical chrome. I would say. So, in a nutshell, some concluding thoughts. And um, what I liked about the game, <clears throat> I like the historical setup. I like the level of historical chrome. I like the underpinning mechanics. Um, they're straightforward. They um, they flow nicely. The turn flows nicely. There's a great sense of asymmetry to both sides, predominantly because of the um, what the uh, the nature of the game. I like the fact it's um, a period of history that I don't have too many games on. I like that. Um, I like the components. I like the counters. I think the map looks 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 amazing. Um, all the sort of visuals and the art and the graphic design, all very nicely done. And it's a it's a it, it presents a very nice, very um, it's a game again that wants to be played, which I really enjoyed. <clears throat> the only quibbles I've got, I think it could probably do with uh, just a little um, bit of love in the sort of uh, from a player's point of view. Like I said. Some of the players' aid needs a little bit of attention. Um, some of the rule books need a little bit of just thinking about how the reader would read them and interpret them and questions they would have upon reading the rules before playing or during play. Very All, all very minor things and they're things that you can easily... They were not a problem for me. Um, I'm, I'm you know, just trying to give some positive feedback back to the publisher. Um, it's a, it's a scenario and a, a setting that I very much enjoyed. I didn't know a huge amount about, say, compared to Napoleonics or other sort of periods of history that I game a lot. So I enjoyed that very much. And I would say that it's a game, the full, um, the historical campaign, it's not a huge number of turns. Um, I think it sort of starts at four o'clock in the morning till the evening in game, you know, in, the, in historical terms. Um I played it through in a long evening, so it's not um, not you know it's not one of those sort of games that takes you like a week to play or anything like that. And it's got a good sense of movement, a good sense of pace actually. Some of the the combat's quite decisive, not necessarily in taking casualties, but in pushing the uh, the opposing opposing player back. Definitely the historical game, things are against you as the French player. <laughs> no two ways about it. But I enjoyed that. I like this. For me, the history is really important. So. I enjoyed playing that, especially playing it solitaire, you know. Um, playing it solitaire, there's no AI or anything like that. You're playing both sides. Um, but it's a sort of game that lends itself quite well to solitaire, I felt. Um, mostly because of the historical scenario. You don't sort of expect to win. <laughs> That's the French, really. You're just playing to see um, how you, how the outcome could be. That's just on the historical scenario. There's another scenario, what if, which is a lot more balanced and it is possible to have a different outcome, I would say. So, yeah. Overall, really enjoyed this, um, and uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you've played it or you've played any other um, game in this setting, please uh, add some comments, and uh, thanks for watching as ever.